Sometimes we encounter multi-loop circuits like this one. It is a multi-loop circuit because there's a loop here, another loop there, and there's also a big loop over here. In this particular circuit, do you see any resistors in series or in parallel with each other? No, there is none. For example, these two resistors, they are not in series because uh, even though they have one end together, the other end is not together, but there is a branch coming out. So these two do not get the same current, so they are not in series. Neither are these two in series because, uh, again, there's a branch coming out. And then none of those are in parallel with each other because uh, they may have one end together, but the other end is not together. So in this kind of circuits, we cannot use equivalent resistance to simplify our circuits. For this kind of circuits, we shall find the Kirchhoff's rules useful. The first one of Kirchhoff's rules is the junction rule. Junction rule says that at any junction point, the current going into the junction equals to the current coming out of the junction. In this circuit, we have two junction points. Let's look at this junction. If 3 amps of current goes into this junction, we must have 3 amps of current coming out of it. If 3 amps, 3 coulombs a second, are going in, we cannot only have 2 amps coming out, otherwise charges will be accumulating at the junction. If 3 amps are going in, we cannot have 4 amps coming out either, otherwise we will have charge depletion at the junction point. So the current going in must equal to the current coming out. The second one of Kirchhoff's rules is the loop rule. The loop rule says that if we go around any closed loop in a circuit, the change in electric potential delta V must be zero. The loop rule is related to the conservation of energy. Let's look at this example. Please find the current in the 4 ohm resistor, the EMF of this battery, and the resistance of this resistor. We can start with the junction rule, the current going in equals to the current going out. We can choose to look at this junction or that one. It does not matter which one we use. Let's say we look at this junction right here. There's one amp going in. There's two amp also going in. That means that we need how many amps going in or out? We need three amps to come out of the junction. That means this three amps will go that way. 3. So the current in the 4 ohm resistor is 3 amps going down. Notice that in this circuit we have three different currents because we have three segments between junction points. There's one segment right here, so 3 amps flow through here. When it gets to the junction point, the current can split or merge. So beyond the junction point, the current would change. So over here, this segment between junction points, that's 1 amp. And then get to the junction point, the current can split or merge, so each segment gets a current. We have used the junction rule, so for the next two, we'll have to use the loop rule. To find the EMF, I have to use either the lower loop or the big loop, so the EMF can be involved. And I'm just going to use the lower loop. I'm going to use this loop, and it doesn't matter where you start, or does not matter whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise. Either way is fine. As long as we go around a closed loop, we'll find the delta V should be zero. Okay, so let's say I'm going to start from that same junction point, and I'm going to go clockwise. So I start right here, and then I follow the current. When I follow the current, the potential should decrease because the current is positive charge flow. If positive charges flow down this way, that means the electric field will go in the same direction because the positive charges get pushed by an electric force that is in the same direction as the electric field. So the downward current means that the electric field over here goes down. So following the current means following the electric field lines. So the potential should go down. Now the potential should decrease by how much 
the voltage across a resistor can be found as V equals to IR. So the voltage difference from between these two points is the I times the R, 3 times 4. So it goes down by that much. And then we go across the battery. A battery maintains a constant voltage, and the positive terminal has a higher electric potential than the negative terminal. So when we move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, the potential should go up. Go up by the EMF, because that's the potential difference across this uh, battery. And then we, there's nothing happening over here, because uh, this wire here is considered as ideal wire. I, an ideal wire would have no resistance. Of course, a real wire has resistance, unless if it's uh, made of a superconductor. But uh, this wire has no resistance because uh, since we're treating this wire as if it's an ideal wire with no resistance. That means that uh, the voltage difference across this segment of the wire is V equals to I times R, and the resistance R is zero. So the voltage difference across this segment of the wire is zero. And then I'm following the current again. If I'm following the current, the potential should go down. It should go down by whatever voltage difference we have across this resistor, which is I times R, so it's 1 times 2. And now we're back to the starting point, so the delta V should be 0. So if we solve for the EMF, you'll find it is 14 volts. The loop rule is consistent with the conservation of energy. Because, uh, let's say, if we follow a positive charge flow through this loop, at first the positive charges flow through this uh, resistor, providing the resistor energy so the positive charges lose potential energy. And then they get pumped by the battery through this battery, and so the positive charges gain potential energy. And then they lose potential energy again by the time they get back to the starting point, their potential energy will be the same as their initial potential energy. That's why if we go through this closed loop, the change in potential would equal to zero. And U equals to Q times V, so if the delta V is zero, that means the delta U is zero for the charges. Now to find the resistance over here, we can use uh, the top loop or the big loop. Just choose one to do, you'll get the same answer. I'm going to use the, the top loop, and let's say I'm going to start from that same junction and then go clockwise again. So for the top loop, start here, I'm going against the current. If I go against the current, the potential should go up. Go up by how much? The voltage across this uh, resistor is I times R, so it's uh, 1 times 2. And then I'm following the current, so the potential should go down by how much? I times R, so it's 2 times R. And then we go across this battery, and this is an 8 volt battery, so the potential difference across the two terminals is 8 volts. That means that the potential should go up by 8, because we're going from negative to the positive terminal, the potential goes up. And then we're going back to the starting point, so this should equal to 0. That means we can solve for the resistance, which is 5 ohms.